somebody go get your chair? Mothers in this place, my name is Wendell. I'm a Christian. As a Christian, the Bible calls us as Christians to come out here and speak up for the babies that are being murdered here today, that are being brought to slaughter. We are called to speak up for them. We are called to speak up for those that cannot speak for themselves. Also, as a Christian, we are called, we are commanded to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And so if you are here today, you are not loving your neighbor. You are doing the opposite. The opposite of love is hate. You are hating your neighbor today. You are deciding that you have the authority to end your child's life. And why is that? Because our government says that you have the authority to end your child's life. You see, our government, our government does not have the authority to say that. He has the authority to follow. He does not have the authority to make unjust laws. He has the authority to make just laws. This is an unjust law. And he says that we have the right to murder a child. You see, your child is made in the image of God. Your child is made in the image of God. The Bible says that your child is he was created in the image of God. He was wonderfully and perfectly made. He knew you in your mother's womb. And you were perfectly made. See, God knew you when you were in your mother's womb. The same as he knows your child that is in your womb. I do not know why you're here today. If you're here for birth control, if you're here for an ultrasound or a women's zen. We're here today to offer you the hope and the forgiveness in Christ. We're here to offer you the gospel today. But if I can give you the good news of the Bible, I have to give you a little bit of bad news today. And you see, the bad news is this. In Romans 3.23 it says, For the wages that is death, but the free gift of God is eternal. Now in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. And you may say, Well, I don't have sin. I'm a good person. But you see, the Bible talks about that. It says that if you've ever lied, you've ever stolen, you've ever, have you ever lived in a world of lust and you've committed adultery with that person in your heart, you see, here's one that people say that I've never done. You've never killed someone, you never murdered someone, but today you are deciding to murder your child. You, this is murder. This is not. And when it's not true, whatever. We're not helping women. We're not helping you. They're ending your child's life today. So I'd ask you today. To have mercy on your child and not murder it. To let us help you. Five blocks down the road, there is an ultrasound van that will give you a free ultrasound. I know places you can go, but you don't have to come here and murder your child. We can take you and you can get a free ultrasound, a free women's exam, whatever you need. If you cannot afford to raise your child, then we will help you. Our church is lined up at this moment that will help you raise your child until it's 18. If you want to keep your child today and you just don't have the money to raise your child, ma'am, let us help you. Yeah, have mercy on your child. Ma'am, please let us help you. We're here because we love you. There's other options. There's adoption. We have other places that will 
walk you through this pregnancy that will help you raise this child until he's 18. He's in a car. You don't have to come to a place where they murder children. You can go somewhere else where you can get a free pregnancy test, free mommy to stand, where it's all free. And as I was saying, we have charges lined up at this moment that will adopt your child, cost free to you. And they will be willing to adopt. So please have mercy today. You see? The Bible says that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And you know, that I don't have to tell you that it's wrong to lie. I don't have to tell you that it's wrong to steal. You already know. You know it's wrong to steal. You know it's wrong to lie. You know it's wrong to murder. You have a conscience. God has written that law in your heart. You know right from wrong. So you know that this place is wrong to be at. You know that this that converting your child is wrong. But there is hope, and there is forgiveness in Christ at this moment. So I ask you today to come and talk with us. Let us help you. I've seen a lot of women go in here today, several that wear masks. And I see that you value your own life, but how can you say that your life matters, but your baby's life does not? How can we say that black lives matter, if your God's baby does not matter. You see, your baby was made in the image of God the same as you were. And for you to decide to take your child's life, it's murder. There again, I do not know why you're here, what you're here for. But you see, you're giving your resources that God has given you today to a place that murders children. If you're here for a women's design, ultrasound, whatever it is, you're giving your resources that God has given you. And you may say, what's this insurance? You see, but God has given you that insurance today. Everything that you have was given to you by God. You see, your breath was given to you by God. Your breath was given to you by God. You don't have your breath because you worked for it and you deserved it. No, you have it because God has given it to you. You see, God has given you a car today to drive in here. He sent us out here today to offer you help and to offer you the gospel and to share the gospel with you today. So I would ask you today to please have mercy on your child. You see, Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was spit on, he was whipped, he was beaten. Jesus Christ did not deserve that. He did not deserve to die that way. You see, Jesus Christ, truly God, truly man, sent his son to live a perfect life that me and you cannot live. He lived that perfect life that we cannot live. He sent his son to that cross to take our sin on his behalf. And then he rose three days later after he was nailed to a cross. He rose three days later. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father in a city for me and you. And you may say today that you're a Christian because you go to church or you feed the homeless or you feed the poor for any reason. Because you read your Bible, because you hand out tracts. You see, those things do not make you Christians. You see, we do those things as Christians because God has taken our heart of stone and gives a heart of flesh. And He calls us to do those things as Christians. Here's another one that I hear all the time. You may say, oh, I'm here. It is not a great or incest. That is a terrible thing. But that has happened. But let me ask you, do 